Dr. Sage here. Welcome back to our discussion on viruses and prions. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the techniques in cultivating and identifying animal viruses. By the end of this video, you should be able to list the three principal purposes for cultivating viruses and describe three ways in which viruses are cultivated. If we're cultivating an animal virus, we can have in vivo methods. These are viral cultivation in lab animals or embryonic bird tissues or in vitro methods, that's viral cultivation in cell or tissue culture. The primary purposes of viral cultivation are to isolate and identify viruses in clinical specimens, prepare viruses for vaccines, and do detailed research on viral structure, multiplication of cycles, genetics, and effects on host cells. In regards to in vivo methods, we can use live animal inoculation. We can have specifically bred strains of animals used for animal cultivation of viruses, for example, using white mice, rats, hamsters, guinea pigs, or rabbits. We can also have injection sites for viral exposure in the brain, blood, muscle, body cavity, skin, or foot pads. Again, in vivo, we can use bird embryos. The benefits of using bird embryos is that embryonic development occurs in a protective shell, intact and self-supporting unit with its own sterile environment and nourishment. And it furnishes several embryonic tissues that support viral multiplication. In vitro, we can use cell or tissue culture techniques. Cell culture or tissue culture is in vitro virus cultivation systems, a simple and effective way to grow populations of isolated animal cells in sterile dishes or bottles. Most viruses are propagated through cell culture. Much of a virologist's work involves developing and maintaining cultures. Primary cell cultures are freshly isolated animal tissue is placed in a growth medium. Cells undergo mitotic division, producing a monolayer on the surface. They retain the characteristics of the original tissue from which they were derived. With primary tissue culture, cells are prepared by separating them from their tissue matrix. Primary cell culture grows attached to the surface of the culture container. Contact inhibition slows the growth of the cells once they become too dense and begin to touch each other. At this point, growth can only be sustained by taking these cells and using them to make a secondary tissue culture. Alternatively, we can have continuous cell cultures. Now, continuous cell cultures can have altered chromosome numbers, they grow rapidly, they show changes in morphology, and they can be continuously subcultured if they are given fresh nutrient media. So again, originally you take the cells and isolate it from a tissue, but in this case, you have transformed cells or individual cells isolated from a tumor. That then creates a continuous cell line and continuous cell cultures are not affected by contact inhibition. They continue to grow regardless of cell density. How do we detect viral growth in a culture? Well, degeneration and lysis of infected cells results in plaques. These are clear, well-defined patches in the cell sheet. They're a macroscopic manifestation of cytoplasmic effects. Plaques develop when viruses release from an infected cell, radiate out to surrounding cells and infect them. Infection spreads gradually and symmetrically from the original point of infection. This was your introduction to the techniques for cultivating and identifying animal viruses. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.